happy Sunday. As you guys know, I am hosting the Modern Trader Summit 2018 in Orlando, Florida, June 23rd. I just wanted to start off with this because the early bird pricing is ending this Thursday, February 1st. So definitely check it out. If you are interested, you can click here for the speakers that are speaking. Myself, Stephanie Cameraman, Anka Metcalf, Latoya Smith-Dean, Alice Mead, Billy Ray Wilson, and a couple others that I'm just waiting on their bios. But definitely check it out because you just go right there to the register and register. If you guys haven't checked it out already, just hashtag FMJ for my book and Amazon. You can click on it. Honestly, I've had nothing but five-star reviews. It is a great book that everyone is loving, so definitely check that out. And on to the watch list. Like I said, I was going to go ahead and show you guys how I do my support and resistance for the watch list. So we'll start off my first long I have is BXC. So I'm looking here on a weekly chart uh, back for five years, but really to see my support and resistance, uh, by the way, guys, this is trading view right here. Um, that I do all of my uh, charting for the watch list and for my weekly uh, videos as well. Absolutely love it. You can create your own watch list. I also have a cryptocurrency watch list. You've got the details throughout the day right here. This yellow is the pre-market, post-market activity. So what I do is basically, it's you know, to me it's pretty simple. It's reading the chart, right? So here, okay, so I'm looking at a support. I would say right here, 1540 is going to be my support for BXC. And then I go ahead, look for, I like using a 15-minute chart just to say, okay, well, it looks like 1559. So we've got about... 19 cents to play with if it does break the support i think it would be more short biased down here to another support level of 14.91 so usually what i'll do is i'll back it out for a year for you guys and you see it looks like it is breaking out on the year 15.59 so i will i will you know step it on back to five years and see okay well look here we have another resistance level 16.68 and then probably up here at 18 and then up to 1975, 20, and then a little bit further up here at 2139. So BXC does have 2.8 million in the float. It was 24.28 million, uh, excuse me, 24.28% <laughs> short float on Friday. So keep that on watch. Next one we have is SMMT. So we've got Summit Therapeutics. Remember, this is a five year chart, so I back it out to 15 minutes. I look at it pretty much emotionless, right? So I'm looking, okay, so on Friday, the high of this candle, 1504 would be our resistance. Support, I'm gonna look back and see, okay, so it looks like people are gonna think of the round number in my head. So 1450, that's what I'm thinking people are gonna use as support. You did see it spiked after hours on, this is Friday's activity, this is Thursday. So after hours on Wednesday, it spiked up. It's come down since then, found support down here around 1360, and has come up a bit. On Friday, SMMT did, did have 61.88% short float volume, and it has 6.17 million in the float. So definitely keep that one on watch. Um, if it does break out, you know, those shorts, if it does move in the early pre-market activity, it could very well... Uh, run up again, but like I said, you're going to be looking for a, another further resistance above the 15 of 16 and then on up to 1764. Even though this was, excuse me, in the pre market or post market period, it, I would still use it as a resistance level there. And when we step it back to a year, you can see above that, that 1764, actually it did break out here on the year, and we'll look back even further on the five year. It looks like it hit a new five-year high. So if it does run up and it breaks 1764, clear skies above. Next on the long list is going to be PULM. So PULM has 10.39 million in the float. It was 53.83% short on Friday. Now you can see it. I was watching this one obviously before. It looks like I did have the Resistance level here at 179 and support at 163. It did break out, ran on up to 217 on Friday. We'll go look at our 15-minute chart, see what happened in the post market as well. So I'll go ahead and move it up here. Looks like we have 217 as our resistance. Support, 
I'm going to say right here, the bottom of this candle. You can see over here, the bottom for this candle is right here. It's changing now because it's following my, my uh, mouse, but it would be 192. So right there, 191, move it up just a bit. This is great. I mean, I absolutely love this program, 192. Trading View is actually also one of the sponsors of the summit as well. So definitely check it out. They have free charting. They also have paper trading as well. So we've got a support of 192 for PULM, resistance of 217. Does look like after that, potentially 237, 267, and then it's going to curl on up. So this one actually might be a good longer term swing. Um, it does sometimes have you know these breakouts and then it falls back down. But overall, it looks like it could be uptrending here. It does look a little oversold on the RSI. And when it does get oversold, it does pull back as it does have lower float to it. Next one on our watch list is going to be NVCR. So you can see, look at this. We've got it at a 52-week breakout potential here. So let's go to our 15-minute chart. We've got the resistance to watch for. I'm looking right here at 23.50 for resistance. Excuse me, as a support, my error, as a, as a support. 24.01 as resistance or 24 right there, the high, the 52-week high and the high of the day. We pull it back on the daily. It's in a breakout. How about on the five-year? Ah, look, we do have more resistant levels here at 25.26. Let's see, the candle high is 25.99. 28.95. So pretty much if it breaks out above 26, we're looking for a resistance of 29. So it does have some more upside potential to it. It isn't oversold on the daily chart here. So this one does look like it's going to have some good potential to it. Uh, we do have news here, but that's January 16th. So disregard that. Next one is MXIM. This one is just more on watch, really, for me, um, as a potential long, because it is so high in the float. So we'll go with the next one that's actually going to be on my, my five for the watch list of MDXG. So MDXG, remember, we are on a five-year chart here. We're going to bring it back to the one-year. And you can see it is breaking out on the one-year chart. It tested that resistance, broke it out a little bit, probably with some shorts that had stops that got executed. And then it pulled back a little bit on the day. However, it did end up fairly high on the day. So there's pretty good potential it came back down, tested a resistance down here, and it's in upward momentum, looks like. So we've got a primary resistance to break of 1726. After that, I would go for the high of the day, high of the year, 1770. And then I'll go ahead and put down here. 1670 for our support and like I said you look back breaking out on the one-year chart five-year chart breakout as well let's look at overall overall this stock is hitting new highs it does have 97 million in the float and they just put news out saying that shorts had tried to discredit the stock and basically that discreditation was false so they it does have 40 percent short overall so definitely keep this one on watch it could run for a couple more days that news came out on the 25th about the short information if you go and you look back at their website so right here is when it, it broke out above this resistance ran and then friday as well those shorts started feeling it for sure they're hoping that it pulls back here um, with 97 million 40 percent short that's roughly uh, what let's see 36 million that was short and on Friday it had 5.8 million that traded hands and it was 60.62 percent short float uh, like I said we'll just put that MX I am up this one's another one to have on watch did have it back here for a potential short it didn't it didn't break that so we'll go to our 15 minute chart and you can see right here the levels 59 11 love this software all right. So for uh, excuse me, 59.11 for resistance, and I would say roughly 58.33 for support. And here we have it on a, on a year chart where it is breaking out on the yearly. 
and that one does have 260 million and it was 23 percent short float traded on friday all right on to the shorts got to get this all in in 15 minutes because that's all the time i have at the moment okay so we have thor industries so we go to the 15 minute chart go ahead looks like support 136.25 resistance right here ah, it looked like it touched up here almost at the high of the day 142.74 for after hours activity i do like to look at the after hours activity actually i'd probably move this up up here to 140.12 for uh, primary support and then if it breaks that and goes down, I would say 136.69. So going short, you might want to try to get in by this resistance level and then see the levels. It might test here, you know, go a little sideways and then drop down further to 136.69. Overall on the yearly chart, you can see here was a past resistance level that flipped to support level. So it could go down from here. After that, you might see 132, 128 if that breaks right on down. All right, we got Winnebago next. So Winnebago, two down days. It looks like it did overall test the support, uh, excuse me, the resistance at 58. Uh, the high pulled back down off of that. So for our supports, we've got 43.66. For resistance, 45.25. After that, if it does break the 4525, I would look at that 48 level right there. We go to the one day chart. You can see it did hit a support level right here, past resistance, sideways action, support level. It could go down to 4211. Actually, what's the low here? 4210 and test that. So we could have another $2.80 downside from the close on Friday. After that, I would say it would probably test around 40. Next on the short list, we have LCII. This one is a lower float with 23.85 million. However, you do see that it had this massive gap down. So we'll go to our 15 minute chart. Go ahead. No emotion in this, right, guys? It's just looking at the chart, reading it. Okay, I would say 118.80 as the secondary level, actually. I would I would put this as a as a primary resistance level to be broken 11660 if that breaks i would look for 11880 for a short potential entry below that for our supports we've got this 11483 would look for that to be tested and then a low of 11021 here is what this had it's hard to see with the volume but if you look at the candlestick up there at the top it says 11021 all right so we look at that we go back pull it back out the one year it looks like 110 was support here in the past but we do have a potential of five dollars to the downside it's sort of in the in the middle land right now we do have some support and resistance levels but once it creates a trend it should move in that direction uh, just be careful of shorts getting squeezed if you do short it because it lower float so it could really squeeze up quickly which is probably what happened why it dropped so quickly and then pulled back up another five dollars next we have win on our short list uh, i do have to say uh, one of my trading buddies did bring this to my attention as well and then i saw it as on my charts i like the chart setup for support i would look at 178.56 for resistance I would look here at 182.50 and then 186 if it does break that level. But it does have, if we back it out to that one year chart, you can see it's got a lot of downside potential. Our first point of support looks like it would be 170. So another $10 down after that, we bring it down here to 161. Below that, we'll see. Um, you know, this one did have a lot of news before with the expansion in Macau. This could just be a simple sell-off from earnings. It did break the support level here of 185, pulled back, and it's gonna test this right here, which it looks like it closed almost at the high. The high was 179.86 and closed 30 cents roughly above that. So it could bounce from here and continue on up in the upward trend that we have going here, or it could go ahead and have a further sell-off. Wind does have 79.09 million in the float. Our last one we have is DVMT. Really quickly, we've got a support of 
a resistance of 83.74. And so, sorry about that, I had a computer issue. So the uh, resistance we have here at 83.74 for support, I would say the first level of support looks like it would be potentially 80.56. And then on down here to the low of this candle, 76.53, the low of the day. And if we pull it back out for Dell Technologies, it does look like that 76.53 was a past support level. Could potentially on drop on down to 73.55. Below that, if it continues, down to 68. But it does look like we have potential for a test of 80.56 down to 76, all the way down to 74. So could potentially have $18 to the downside. Um, as you guys know, I have been talking about OLED, got into it way back in uh, January of last year. Let's see here. So January of, uh, where is it? 2017, back here around 59, just absolutely exploded. This company does have 5,400 patents for OLED technology and uh, it has pulled back, pulled back, pulled back, did test this support level down here. I am watching it again for potential ad position uh, to, we took 50% off and now are looking to add some back, but I would look for, we bring it to the 15 minute chart, I would look for a support level of 160. 167.50 and a resistance level of 175. To me, if you look at it on a daily chart, it does look like it's going to have somewhat of a channel here between 184, actually more 180 down to 165. If it breaks the channel in one direction or the other, I think it will be confirmed movement of the momentum. This could just be a Friday bounce for such a long, you know, such a downward trend. It did bounce a little bit, but it needs to go ahead. If I go to the 15 minute chart, it does have a tendency. It pulls down, closes up, goes down, closes up, down, up in the pre-market, down, up in the pre-market, down, this has gone up in the post market, so I would need it to have confirmation that it is breaking that trend overall because I don't trust this movement right here. I think this is just Friday activity of shorts closing out. Um, and it does have the, the fear factor of people selling off, institutional selling as well because it dropped more than 20%. So keeping this one on watch, overall it is a good quality value stock, I believe in my opinion. And as you guys always know, these are just my opinions on stocks. So just uh, keep an eye out on that. This was another one that I'd recommended, uh, not recommended, excuse me, provided my opinion that uh, this was a good entry back in the beginning of January. And I got in around here, 2341, uh, down here, 2341, and it has just absolutely exploded. Uh, it is a gene therapy stock and it's just been doing incredibly well. It is a lower float one. Edit also uh, trades similarly, but CRISPR does tend to have a lower float to it, so it does have more movement. If people start getting, sh you know, if people start shorting it, they do get sort of trapped, and then it will sort of squeeze against them, like this right here, down day. Oops. Well, you know what? It goes up, gaps up, hurts them even more, and it's just continuing in the upward motion. So it, it, I did take a little bit of profit. We'll look to see if it does have a bit of a pullback. It might pull back down here to the prior resistance level of 3089. When it broke out, it's been in an upward trend and a run from there. So it might pull back about $9 or $5 even down to the, the 35 mark before it will go ahead and bounce again because it is in the oversold area on the daily RSI at the moment. That's it for the week, guys, for this weekly video. So let me know what you think of this. You know, do you like this style? Uh, do you prefer to see me? Do you prefer the live? Let me know in the comments or shoot me a message at uh, carpeprofit at gmail.com. Definitely like and subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, go check out the Modern Traders Summit. It's a lot of great speakers that are looking to help you profit in your trading journey. And Carpe Profit, guys, sees those profits one at a time. Grow your account one day at a time. Like my Instagram post, you know, when you reflect back on your journey, those small gains that you have, $25, $50, $100 in the beginning, 
seems so difficult and then once it starts to add up you gain confidence and you get consistency and before you know it you're making hundreds to thousands a day and you can say what to your job what everybody wants to say that's right f my job right that's the whole reason why i wrote this to help you get out of your nine to five grind and into something that you love and you're passionate about where you can work anywhere in the world have a great week looking forward to hearing from you guys as always love the feedback see you soon